This morning, Minister Hunt uh, informed me that um, by phone that the Climate Commission had been abolished. Tony Abbott has sacked a former Australian of the Year from his government posting. You see before you here the directors of the new Australian Climate Council. The Climate Council, having been there right from the beginning, having been sacked from being a Climate Commissioner and seeing the Climate Council start and start to bring in money and develop and grow. The community just responded with their wallets and their hearts. I'm extraordinarily proud of it as an organisation and 10 years ago I would never have thought we'd be where we are today. It's been many awesome projects. One that sticks out on understanding mental wellbeing in the context of climate change and we had about 500 Australians very courageously share with us their stories of what they've been through with extreme weather disasters, how they were clubbing together as a community. It's such a reminder about just how positive and resilient and determined we can be. It's more recognising the overarching impact of the Climate Council and how by building up a profile, by building up understanding in the community of the issues, playing into that massive change that have actually got people over the line that we were able to vote for a government that said, we are going to do something. That's no small thing. I don't think I really had a climate moment as such. When I finished my PhD, which was following ants around the bush for about four years, I needed a change. It was my PhD supervisor who said, how about you look at climate change? And, and that was back in 1990. I don't think I had one. And I was lucky to spend some time in the Pacific when I was younger. I saw up close some of those brute realities of climate change. I was taken a lot of inspiration from there. I was a junior doctor working in a hospital in Sydney and sort of got increasingly interested in like big picture health issues. And one day they had guest lecturer come in who was talking about climate change. Just very objectively and clearly set out, this is climate change, this is what we're on track for, this is what it's going to mean for health. It's the biggest health issue of them all, which is climate change. The Garno paper, a paper talking about the economic challenges associated with climate change and policies. And that was really the first time I'd become particularly aware of how bad things could get and I was like, boy, we need to do something. The 1994 bushfires in New South Wales and something wasn't right. Going on past seasons, those fires just shouldn't have happened, but it suddenly got hot and dry. By January, we were losing hundreds of homes and I'd never seen fires that intense before. So it really got me thinking, what's going on here? I don't think not having hope is an option. I regard hope as a strategy and we have to have that strategy to keep going. You know, action leads to more hope. It makes you want to do the next thing. It makes you see that it's possible. Just seeing people work with whatever they've got, whatever's near them to build a better future, that, that always makes me hopeful. Seeing so many people in so many different walks of life saying it's time to take action. You know, you look at pictures from a hundred years ago of a street in the US, there was horse and carts everywhere. Look at a picture two years later, there's not, not a horse and cart to be found, there's cars everywhere. Things can move very quickly, humans can adapt and change very quickly if they have to, and we really have to now. There are organisations like the Climate Council that won't give up, that I do see momentum changing, that we are moving in the right direction. I have to believe that things can change. Straight in election recently, it's just great to see the community standing up and understanding that we do face an existential threat. I get to work with some truly amazing people, some of the country's best scientists, communicators, but also the amazing Climate Council community and all that energy that's there working together and on good days you really feel, yes, we can deal with this. I love working with people who are really good people who understand the biggest issue for our generation. I love working with the most incredible minds, really amazing people who know so much and who, despite the challenges, just keep you enthusiastic and motivated to just keep on fighting day in and day out for a better world. Experts in different fields. I've learned from economists, health experts. There's just so many people with so much expertise and the community's learning. People who are part of Climate Council, they know that. And it's independent, so there's no hidden agendas. There's no big money trying to force us to tell lies. And so we just tell the truth. I hope that everybody is as proud of the organisation as I am. We've grown from zero to being the, the biggest voice for climate action 
in Australia. We all bring different talents and motivations and we work together on what is the world's greatest problem. It's been an absolute privilege to be part of this organisation and I hope that everybody else feels the same way.